were multicultural, multi-generational. CFDN is there with their arms wide open, come as you are. And I think that is very impactful. Everybody needs to come to Jesus, just like we are. We don't have to be perfect. No perfect people kind of came out of that idea that uh, come all you who are weary, heavy laden, and need rest. I think no perfect people allowed kind of became a slogan. I don't even think it was purposeful. We loved it when God brought people that needed healing because we knew what it was like to be healed. We invite everyone into the church and we don't make any judgments or anything. We let Jesus have time to work. You can be who you are and then let God do a work within you. We've built our entire ministry off of God, you have to show up and change people's lives, which seems a little scary, but God's always shown up. Today is your breaking out day. Do that. Today God is your God. Can you lift a shout of praise as we lift our voice to Jesus? Yeah! The first service for us was unforgettable. Stepped into Church for the Nations, it was called Eagle's Nest at that time. In the middle of the service, Pastor Mike, he said this handsome young couple. And one of the things that he said is that you're gonna have a quiver full. Him not knowing that we had just had an eptopic pregnancy, Chrissy had actually had one of her tubes removed. Exactly nine months from that day, our first baby was born, Casey Joy. And so it was a total miracle baby. As we were praying, um, pastor kept circling around where we were at. And I thought to myself, that's odd, because I'd never seen anything like that. I'd never witnessed the prophetic like he was prophetic. And he went back up to the stage and he called my husband out and said, you, you, sir, in the blue shirt. Gave me some information that I was like, wow. And then he said, you know, Jesus loves you. And uh, I just started bawling because he hit the chord that I needed to hear was that Jesus actually did love me. I remember that first service, Pastor Mike called us out and had a word for us. Just like today, <laughs> we knew it was home. At the end of the service, all 30 people surrounded me and hugged me. I was a new person. And so as we walked to our car, Steve said, so what did you think? And I said, I am never going back. <laughs> of course, we did go back the very next Sunday, and here we are 38 years later. Our first service, Pastor Mike just came up to us, and he imparted something that was exactly what we needed, and that was hope. How you've heard before that one word from God can change our, your life forever, and that's exactly what it did. We knew we were home. Hear the word of the Lord, Michael. For you are chosen to be a prophet in the house of God. A prophet of the Lord your God. You kind of have to pray about where we were going to meet and hope that you found it. That's how many different places we had to meet. We had to move from that building to a school auditorium. We were there for a few years. We went from there to the car dealership on Bill Road. When we went to 19th Avenue and we found out it was for sale, I think we had 200 people in the whole church, and that place was huge. My dad just had faith. He knew that God was gonna give us this building, and somehow the people selling the building saw his faith and knew that it was the right thing. I was the broker who sold the 19th Avenue campus to now it's Kingdom of the Valley. The one thing about that that's, that a lot of people don't know is we had offers to sell that property to other ministries that were not Christian ministries. And he said, John, I want this to stay in the kingdom. I don't care what it costs me. Um, that's a major, you know, you don't see that very often. And then when we kind of had maxed out what we could do at that campus, and that season was the season that um, he got a call from the pastor here. It's amazing to me how many people we meet that were a part of this campus years and years and years ago. I think there is such a wealth here and stuff that the Lord is wanting to do. I believe we're just now seeing the fruit of that. This Church for the Nations puts the Holy Spirit front and center we're gonna let him do his work no matter what it looks like. Pastor Mike's kind of fearless 
If the Holy Spirit tells him to do something, he's going to do it. And I think because of his fearlessness, God just continues to bless this place and bless this church. We're going to see an explosion of revival. We're going to see an explosion of people coming, songs being written, the presence of God flowing like never before. What a day to be alive. What a day to help build the church. Our new phrase to me has been the truth for a long time, that the church is our family. One of the first times that, that hit me really hard was we were locked out of our building the Saturday before Easter Sunday, literally. And for several months, every Sunday we met in a different place. But it was incredible how everybody showed up to help. Everybody, just like a family. There's an anointing, obviously, on CFTN uh, for worship. I was like the second keyboard player playing behind Israel in those days. Every worship service was a massive adventure. <laughs> I mean, it was like no, no set list, no, not even being told the key. You just have to grab a hold and by ear, hang on to what he was doing. And he was going everywhere prophetically. And Israel was amazing. There was this little blip in the historical graph where I was actually the guy, but I was sandwiched in between Israel and Pastor BJ. And then now Pastor Moises too, to me, his voice, his presence, the authenticity, the kind of fathering, the maturity of his leadership is just wonderful. Worship at CFTN is like just coming into heaven's atmosphere where there's freedom. There is no formula. You can look around, eyes are open, eyes are closed, people are spinning, people are waving flags, people are clapping, people have hands raised, people have hands down. It doesn't matter. I mean, we've had services where, you know, praise and worship will go off for better than an hour. It's just because he's really sensitive and willing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to attribute to it, except it must come out of the heart of Pastor Mike, who desires to see God come without any restraint. I heard from Pastor Mike, uh, you know, details about how the church suffered financially at the hands of uh, an individual who decided to take matters into their own hands and and defraud basically the church and the people. The trouble at Eagle's Nest was devastating. It was as bad as anything could be. I started doubting God. I started doubting the church. I started doubting even God's love for us as a family. The struggle of it, going from place to place, packing and packing out church, it all was uh, quite a toll. Pastor Mike and Mary have become beautiful people um, because of that struggle. They were somewhat stoic, positive, leaning on God, and projecting that God would walk them through very tough times, which is exactly what happened. I started watching my parents get restored, and it was nothing in the natural, and I started to see God heal them, and heal my dad, and, and bring him out of the depression and things that he was in. That's really when things started to change, it started to change for our family and our church. If you're not careful, Self-pity will make your life chronically miserable. God has spoken through Pastor Mike into our lives personally, so we're just blessed to be here and glad to be a part of it. There'll be, you know, a dozen or more young people that are inspired and nurtured and mentored by Pastor Mike. And I think we're just gonna have wildly powerful services. We love our church. We love Pastor Mike and Mary. We couldn't be anywhere else. It has been an honor to serve with them. I hope we go another 40 years. We're here to take the vision God's given Pastor Mike and Mary, my parents, and we want to see all of that accomplished. But my hope and prayer is that our family and you know the church family is still here in many generations to come, just continuing to let the Holy Spirit move.